Today's episode of the 10 and 2 podcast is brought to you by Topper Jewelers and the new limited edition Oris Diver 65 Maxi. A watch that is designed by watch enthusiasts for the enjoyment of watch enthusiasts. The Topper Diver 65 Maxi is ready for any adventure you can imagine. Limited to only 165 pieces, the new Maxi Diver 65 brings a perfectly bold vintage reissue aesthetic to an already iconic timepiece. This collaboration is sold exclusively through our friends at Topper Jewelers. Visit topperjewelers.com for more information and to pre-order your Oris Diver 65 Maxi now. Hey everyone, welcome to the 10 and 2 podcast. I'm Kat. And I'm Catlin. And we're here every week talking watches, photography, adventure, and exploring the world of horology. What's going on? Not a whole lot. What's yeah. going on with you? I'm doing good. Yeah. Doing good. Awesome. I'm trying to move my mic because I feel like... <laughs> It's in the in the eyesight. Um, I'm excited. I am too. Yeah. Because we get to talk about watches, photography, exploring. <laughs> Is that everything? That yeah, that's everything. Show? With a friend of ours. With a friend. We have Adrian from Bark and Jack on the show today. What's going on, Adrian? Hey, guys. Not much. Just doing photography, watches, and exploring. <laughs> <laughs> and if somebody's exploring, that's all we care about. I feel yeah. like we added that intro at the worst possible time yeah. because we're not exploring. Well, the idea, <laughs> yeah, the initial idea was we were going to be traveling, we were going to be doing stuff, and we definitely haven't. So We were supposed to meet you finally in person yeah. over the summer. Yeah, you were supposed to. It's a good intro, though. It's, it sets the, the, the tone. For the, <laughs> to be disappointed the because nobody's adventuring. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh well thanks adrian for being on the show today um for those that, for having me yeah for those that don't know adrian has a watch youtube channel bark and jack and um also has the bark and jack shop which i've actually noticed lately it's not on instagram anymore did you take it off bark and jack i shop? did because i I just couldn't be bothered to have two Instagram <laughs> accounts. So I just thought, well, it, if I'm going to take a, if I'm going to spend time taking a nice photograph of a strap, yeah, then I'm going to want to put, put that on, on yours. the main account. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of that thought, makes sense. So, I feel yeah, that um, Instagram's just man. It's a full time job. It is full time job, man. And, and I don't know how is. you do it. No. Well, yeah. I don't. I've I've gone down to like posting two or three times a week. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've my focus both on Instagram and YouTube is quality over quantity so taking a long time and also you guys keep upping your photography game <laughs> well, and then that makes me have to up my photography game I'm like guys let's just chill out just oh don't even. To just a normal yeah, don't even. even though i am super excited because i shoot everything in natural light and i just got our old light setup that kat's been using because we upgraded our new light setup for the studio but yeah. now i have to learn how to shoot indoor like artificial light and it's so hard I can't. it's a big difference yeah, yeah. but once i do i'm coming after yeah you all. i like, feel like once you get it <laughs> it's nice to be able to control well yeah because i mean first of all it gets dark at four o'clock now <laughs> so my my sunshine is very limited and i'm i get less and less time in the mornings so like yeah i'm super excited yeah to, like come home at at nine o'clock at night <laughs> you know because i have nothing else to do but take watch photos what else would you do? I don't know. I don't know. What this else? is my whole life. <laughs> Remember the days when you could take a watch photo on a cell phone and yeah. upload it to Instagram? I was just going to say, happy I, with I would, that. exactly. I wouldn't dare post an iPhone wrist shot <laughs> again. That, we, that's, that would just be destroying the the theme. Well, so like I, I just got my camera maybe last like the end of November, beginning of December. Mm -hmm. And I think Kat did around the same time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on Instagram, you can look up your memories. And it's like, I'm looking up my memories and I'm like, man, I can never be content with these sorts of photos ever again. And I miss that. Like mm -hmm. the amount of work. I know it's a first world problem and you guys are probably like, whatever, shut up, y'all. Um, but the amount of work that comes into setting up like a freaking even just a basic wrist shot yeah. on a camera. Yeah. Well, and there's so many great photographers now yes. on Instagram that there is a lot of pressure. <laughs> so much pressure. And then I feel like I have, like, I hate when I upload a photo because you have to upload something every single day. And, like, you upload something that it's just, like, you know isn't, you're not in love with it. Yeah. And you're just like, ugh. 
whatever. Well, I used to think you had to upload every get every day. I used to upload twice a day, one in the morning, one at lunchtime. Um, but now I've gone down in quantity, but taking more time over my shots. My engagement's gone up. Mm. Like I had, I didn't post for a few days, and then um, I did a, a photograph of uh, my Black Bay Fifty Eight, and that had like five thousand likes. I've never had five thousand. Wow. Likes. And so it, I think the algorithm. I know the YouTube algorithm has changed. Okay. Um, but I think the Instagram has as well. Maybe I'm what, posting once a week, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Maybe maybe like where you're not oversaturating, you know, your feed, so more people see it if it's maybe. if it's less often. I've I've done the same. I've only I only post maybe three or four times a week now myself. I and need to get to this life. <laughs> I feel like it would be easier. Well, it's hard. It's hard to take a great photo every single day. Um, and of course, we the level that we take photos, it's a whole setup. It's a whole thing. You know, it's not just a snap of a picture on, on your phone. But I do miss I do miss those days of just, yeah, pulling out the cell phone in the car and taking a wrist shot. And there's nothing wrong with those. Like, no, I genuinely yeah. miss it. And honestly, like looking back at some of my like memory photos, I'm like, some of these are my favorite photos that I've taken. Yeah. And I just, I wish that I could get in the mindset of being okay with that again. Yeah. Now I feel like yeah. once you go to a camera, yeah, <laughs> once you get a camera, like you have to like use it all the time or else. Have you, know. Adrian, I know we were talking uh, a couple weeks ago, you were talking about switching over to Sony. Have you switched over yet? Yeah. So I bought, it was delivered two days ago. I've bought the Sony A7C. Oh man. Um, Just to like, just to try out the... Uh, the Sony system yeah. and see if I like it and uh, I do and so I'm going to sell everything and try and buy the A7S3 which is um, the big full frame expensive yeah full frame yeah um, but it's 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 quite a beastly setup um, main, j- just for video mainly yeah for photography I'm still going to shoot Fuji because I just like mm-hmm. the Fuji process I like the controls uh, but for video it's annoying because the video of Fuji is incredible, mm-hmm. but it's just the um, the interface. It just doesn't yeah. feel right. Um, whereas Sony, it's just amazing. And also they've got this new, I don't know how geeky you want to get, but they've got this <laughs> new way of doing stabilization. Rather than mm-hmm. doing in-body stabilization, uh, it does, the A7C does have in-body stabilization, but you turn that off and it records the gyro data. So the data that it would control uh, the sensor shift, it just records it as metadata on the footage. And then rather than getting the tiny processor in the camera to process the stabilization, mm-hmm. you get your computer to do it. And it looks incredible. It oh, wow. It l- turns everything literally into a gimbal. Wow, um, that's gimbal awesome. Quality, uh, which hmm. is You're looking to crazy. That. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think like it, it, you kind of hit the nail on the head with, with photography and even I want this with having a Sony system. I want the more manual. I like Fuji's. I like your yeah. camera because you have all those manual buttons that, and they're on top and it does feel like a mechanical camera. Right. But then with video, I think you do want the more, you know, the technical stuff and, and the more advanced and, and, uh, and it doesn't feel that way when you are on those Fuji systems. Well, the video, you have less room for error. Like mm-hmm. with, with photography, you can, you know, you can retake the same shot a few times. You can yeah. edit it, you know, edit yeah. the hell out of it, whatever. But with video, it's so much work to redo <laughs> what you've done. That's why I hate it. <laughs> That's why we have one YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I've been saying, I think the last Hotics episode, I said, oh, yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up this, this weekend. For like months. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, you fun. did, didn't you? You said, yeah, it's I did, up. I did, I did. And maybe it'll like come out, ago. maybe it'll be out by the time this is out. It's it almost done. <laughs> it's almost it's like the video cats forever working on. It's fun though, but yeah. you know what? Here's the thing, like people message me about it and I'm like, you know, we're just doing our thing. This, yeah. is, this is all about having Absolutely. fun. Both of us have full-time regular jobs, you know, yeah. so like to do all of this um, on the, um, you know, in, in our part-time, it's very time consuming, but we do it because we love it. So yeah. And if it becomes a job, then I don't I don't want it to become a job. No, no. Yeah. Well, and and I'm such a freaking perfectionist. perfectionist which I love. But, yeah, but I hate because then I'm just like, it's not ready. It's not ready. It's not ready. <laughs> well, what, what are you um, what's standing out as not being ready? So one thing that, um, yeah, this is going to be super nerdy for, for folks. But so I shot this this last video we did. I shot in a 
in a Sony profile, the HLG3. <laughs> I know most people are not even going to know what that means. But I'm using some some LUTs to color grade it. And the color grading is just a really, it's something that it does take time to learn. Yeah. Um, versus shooting right out of camera. And kind of what we did the last time, which was was easy. I tweaked it a little. Well, but we were also in one lighting situation mm-hmm. the entire time last yeah. time. And this time we did a lot of different things. Different so buildings, lot, inside, outside. Right, inside, outside. So you have, and it went from sunny to overcast to like <laughs> raining. So so there is a lot of different colors yeah. to work with. Yeah, and just getting skin tones right and all that is because uh, we got to let tan. Yeah, for real. Yeah. So I think that's 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 the biggest <laughs> learning the curve. Priorities. Yeah. Yeah. I, For, I'd okay. give I'd give yourself a deadline and, <laughs> uh, and get it done, but also <laughs> Adrian's like work. <laughs> But no, it, it it doesn't need to be perfect, yeah. Because this is part of your journey. The, the, yeah. This is the content that you create. It's like if you listen back to the first podcast, it probably isn't as good as what you're doing now. Adrian's For sure. just um, trying to like he's trying to make sure that we're not going to compete with him. He's like, just put out <laughs> shit. It's fine. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, 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 I used to run a recording studio, and it, one of this uh, one of this mindset is something that we used to talk about mm-hmm. a, a lot. Is when is it ready? Yeah. And it's ready when, if you're being paid for this, you mm-hmm. wouldn't be editing this long. That's true. If someone was saying, yeah. here's 10,000 pounds, work on it for as long as you, how long is it going to take? You're probably going to say, I don't know, two weeks, let's just say. And then at the end of two weeks, you're going to have to hand in a bit of work. Yeah. So you could tweak it forever. You could be on this for the next 10 years, <laughs> constantly changing, because you'll always learn a new process. That's you'll true. always learn something to change and something that you do differently. But that's what you're going to do in the next one. It's like the iPhone that was launched a couple of weeks ago. That's infinitely better than the first one that came out. And they mm-hmm. probably had all the technology in the current iPhone that they had five years ago. Mm-hmm. But they didn't need it all to go out in that first iPhone or mm-hmm. whatever iPhone it was. So it's about getting it done now and then changing things for next time. Yeah, I can see Otherwise that. Otherwise, you sure. will just... You will just play forever. <laughs> All right. Well, so, and I mean it. Oh, uh, but that, that is very true. Very true. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I'll just put it out then. Let's do it. Is, yeah. yeah. I mean, I trust you. I've seen it. Uh, you have I pretty have, much seen I've it. Seen, like, watch back oh, my, yeah. um, you didn't have to watch it back, but uh, I did a, a video on the Tudor Pedagos uh-huh. and that was my first time of shooting in um, a, a log format, in a log okay. uh, profile. And it was it was shocking. I got the white balance completely wrong. I didn't know how to expose for log. And it, the colors are horrible. And it took me ages, especially with the fact that the Pelagos was blue. And so yeah. then I had to go through and make sure all the blues were correct. And I couldn't do it. Yeah. So I thought, fuck it, just give up and, and put out what I can do. Yeah. And yeah. then I'll learn it for next time. So I'm, the next video that should go out on Sunday is also in, in log. Yeah. Um, but hopefully I'm going to do a better job for that than what? we did last time. If I don't, it'll, be, it'll just be the next one. At, at some yeah. point, I'll get it right, but it doesn't have to be Perfect right, every time, right yeah. now. I yeah. know. It's a struggle. Peter, well, Peter McKinnon says it's better to get it done than <laughs> to get it perfect. And Peter McKinnon is king, so. <laughs> what did he say? It's better to get it done than, yeah, better to get it done than perfect. For sure. Well, and, and that brings up another thing. Like your, your style of video has changed quite a bit in the last, I would say, four or five months for sure yeah. is this is this a direction that you you do want to take your videos in it's it's getting away from uh i know when you first started you were very much um and you're still sort of that vlogging style but you know we're seeing a lot of i love like your outdoor shots when you're yeah when you i mean and you've got the perfect landscape too so that's that's amazing but uh yeah i love the the drone footage you're using now too is that Thank is that a direction you're going to go in a little bit more yeah I, I got into a bit of a funk um during lockdown um i Although I've always worked at home, I have always, the, the past couple of years I've worked at home because of the channel, uh, I, I really haven't liked the fact that I couldn't just get out in the car and just go hang out with the people in the watch shops and just go talk watches. Or Red Bar, I really miss Red Bar and the yeah, watch meetups. for sure. Um, and so to kind of counteract that, I, I just started making content that I wanted to make rather than worrying about, is this content going to grow the channel? Is this content yeah. going to do this or that? My focus was let's shoot a video in log and see how it goes. Let's mm-hmm. try different um, uh, diff- different lighting situations, um, try different uh, cameras, and, and try and be more cinematic. So it's basically my time to learn. So worrying, not worrying too much about growth, but focusing more on um, educating myself on on how things actually work. The content that I'm doing now is what I always wanted to do. I just didn't know how to do it. Uh, yeah. So when uh, I'm going to do a video fairly soon. <clears throat> kind of reacting to my first YouTube video. Oh, no. It is horrible. And it's, it, 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 it's funny, 
it's just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but the, the the point is, that I kind of want to highlight that you don't have to know everything right mm-hmm. away. The, yeah. the, the whole process is just turning on the camera and starting. And actually, that was on my iPhone, turning on the iPhone and just start doing it. So yeah, all through lockdown. I, I guess the past four or five months has been about education. Uh, I've learned a lot now. So it's now getting back on to growing the channel. And uh, YouTube, the algorithm is favoring high quality content over the quantity of content. So before, um, a lot of people used to daily vlog Mm -hmm. because that's how you grew your channel. But YouTube doesn't really care about that now. They just want good stuff. Good stuff. We're going to be YouTube celebrities then in that case. (laughs) (laughs) If it's quality over quantity. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and I know you've chatted in the past about... um, I know you mentioned, so your photography videos you've done, which I absolutely love. And I think a lot of people actually do appreciate, although on your channel, haven't always done perform the best. You've talked about doing a a separate channel for the photography stuff. Is that still in the works you think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Last night I actually went through and turned off um, probably about 50% of the videos that I had on the channel uh, and all of the photography videos. So I'm I'm going to start up a photography channel. Okay. That's Um, exciting. Not too much. I don't really know what. When I started Barking Jack, the, the, the kind of USP was that I was a normal guy talking about watches as opposed to uh, um, a, a wealthy person talking about watches yeah. or someone from the industry. So I was, I was, I was like just a normal watch geek. Yeah. Um, but with a photography channel, like everyone has a photography channel. So I, I don't really know what my USP would be other than just wanting to share what I've learned. Mm-hmm. Um, which is what everyone does. So I, I'm, I'm not, it, it's kind of going to be an excuse to make videos. Yeah. yeah. And I guess that's probably what the watches are. The watches are, I, I, I like watches obviously, but I just want excuses to make video content. Um, so that's kind of why I'm just starting to. Well, I mean, so it's, a, it's also, another passion. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't yeah, do exactly. anything? What do you mean? On, on, the, on the watch channel, oh. uh, people just don't watch it. And I've <laughs> since learned that um, YouTube will categorize you Oh. Um, your content. So if you've started in a niche like watches mm-hmm. you and you launch um, a, a video on uh, the Sony a7 III, YouTube says, well, no, you're a watch channel. Well, yeah. Why are you doing Stay in that? your lane, sir. Yeah, yeah so stay in your lane. <laughs> because there's a photography blogger over here who's been talking about the a7 III for the past two years. Yeah. We're going to promote his channel, his video more than yours. Okay, um, so it makes sense to separate the, the topics out. Well, and you get to do something that you're passionate about no matter what. And I think, I think that's one of the things that you can tell about your channel and just, I mean, and I think these, like you're the kind of people that we like to talk to, we like to surround ourselves with because you're doing it for a genuine passion and and because you just freaking love it. Like, you know, we talked about this, I think during our our last hot episode, none of us are making enough money to like, (laughs) you know, retire today. And like, you know, we're, we're doing what we do because we genuinely just, we love what we're doing. We love Mm -hmm. like working with the people we're working with, talking about the time topics we have you know and I think that genuinely comes across so I'm excited to see the photography channel yeah for sure I think watches and photography kind of go hand in hand but also Mm -hmm. because we're so like present on Instagram and that platform I think it Instagram really changed the way we look at watches it's so many ways Mm -hmm. have you guys started taking photographs since November you you said you got your camera in November uh November of last year I I got mine I think um she you you had yours before Yeah, yeah I had mine back in August and and I uh, have yeah, So you guys are quite new to photography. Yeah. Yeah. Like I had never picked up I had like a little cheap digital camera yeah. for a long time until before last November. So Oh man. <laughs> I really need to up my game. <laughs> well we no. have we're very fortunate. We have we have the National Watch Club yeah. has so many photographers. It's insane. But we have a, our, our good friend, Josh, who's at Stuff and Watches. Um, he's a phenomenal photographer. And he took a, we, you know, back in the days when you could go to people's houses and, and things like that. We went to mm-hmm. his house one Saturday. And um, that was when we had those Four Seasons Grand Seikos in. Oh, yeah. And so he, which had to be like, so, if you're going to learn how to photograph a watch <laughs> style, learn on the most complicated watch style ever. Um, and so like he, he showed us so much yeah. and, and it was absolutely phenomenal. So we, t- we picked up a lot from that and then I've just been learning yeah. along the way. YouTube <laughs> people. Yeah. People like you. I mean that it's, it's true. I, I've watched, I mean, God knows how many, every freaking Peter McKinnon video and whether it, it was related to what I was doing or not and just picking up skills along the way and, yeah, it's just how you learn, and then you just get out and do it. Yeah, 
It's, I mean, it's the only way. I love shooting photos. I mean, it's a, it's I definitely my passion. Until I find something that I'm frustrated with. <laughs> like, Kat's been, <laughs> Kat has gotten so many text messages lately of me complaining about a watch that we have in because I can't freaking get it. And I'm so Some of them are really hard. Yeah. And when they have, like, domed crystals oh, or something God. or, yeah. or, like, a, a, a polished case and you're just getting light everywhere. Yeah. And it's, yeah, some of them Well, it's really that way hard. with uh, not, well, maybe not so much anymore, but the Rolex you know, crystals, uh, they don't really have the anti-reflective, which I like the look of in person, but then, yeah, for photography, it really sucks. And uh, the Formex we had in. The Formex. Even I, though it, it had anti-reflective coating, it just was the just a terrible. The problem was the color. I don't yeah. know. Like, I could not, green. for the life of me, get it to look green. Every yeah. photo I took was brown <laughs> or yellow, and I tried indoor. I tried outdoor. Yeah. I tried, like, the fancy light setup and everything and I was just like screw this I'm just done I'm like Kat thank god you got the photos because you're way like phenomenal so um yeah yeah your shots are are, are insane yeah I I sit there thinking is this just a press shot that she's sharing so this is our our podcast studio there's like a little (laughs) photography studio in her house as well um she kids she kids out jonathan uh, her husband had uh, all of his guitars were stored there and it's just like a small little (laughs) closet basically yeah um yeah and she's got a whole photography studio and yeah it's freaking amazing i've done um yeah i've done a little bit of work now for a couple of brands and some things and it's fun. I love it. It's just like a little thing I can do on the side and why not keep it going? Yeah. But uh, I find it quite therapeutic, just kind of putting on a podcast, getting yeah. a whiskey and then just getting like lost and just taking a shot. Just yeah. like one shot, but taking hours to get all the lighting right. And, mm-hmm. and it sometimes takes me longer to take the thumbnail for YouTube than it does to actually record the whole Oh my gosh. Video. I'm not that well, dedicated well. to anything. <laughs> Kat and I are just downstairs in the kitchen trying to take a cute thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess if you have two women, it is a little difficult it's probably, to yeah. get a good thumbnail. We're a bit picky. <laughs> oh um, man, but you were touching on uh, Instagram, you know, trends and things like that lately. And I guess that kind of brings us into our our kind of topic for today, really, you know, we've seen, well, was it not the last episode? A couple episodes ago, I talked about selling off some pieces in my collection yep. and then I was scared that I was going to become a, I guess, a Rolex fangirl because I'm considering the new well, sub. You- and of course, I had several people reach out DMing me like, don't sell your collection. Don't sell your Omegas and your Tutors and get a Rolex. Don't be that person. And I'm like, What's wrong with being that person? What's wrong with I like it because I I just like it. I mean, I we we checked out the new subs a few weeks ago and mm-hmm. I was so impressed and I know Adrian you were talking about you've gotten a little hands-on time with the new ones too and I just want one. <laughs> yeah. And it it makes me happy and it's not to say that the Rolex is better than my Seamaster or my Tudor because I, I I don't think in theory that it is. It's just that I I like the way it feels on my wrist better. And that's what it comes down to. I, yeah. I, I think that is the most important part is how it makes you feel. Mm-hmm. And p- people will email me or miss me saying uh, exactly the situation that you're in. Agent, I've got these watches. Should I sell them and buy this one watch? And, uh, I don't know. You have to figure that out for yourself. Yeah. What's going to bring you more joy? A collection of watches or one kick-ass watch? You yeah. have to figure that out. But uh, also, it annoys me when people say, don't be that person. Like, <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm going to be whoever I want to be. <laughs> Sorry, do you guys mind swearing? I, no, I, it's I'll fine. Stop, it's fine. I'll stop You're swearing. Fine. <laughs> I don't want to cause you editing. We'll edits. hit the we'll hit the not for kids check mark. <laughs> 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 no, and and Adrian, I know you've gotten this too because over time, you know, you've been called a Rolex fanboy. I've seen it on your YouTube comments all the time, and it's it's. Not I, really I call fair. myself a Rolex fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> you have, except for like yeah. we just talked about you. You think that you're you're. Coming into retirement in your Rolex fanboy. <laughs> like, retirement. I, I'm just not a fan of um, modern Rolexes. I, mm-hmm. I, I think um, I'm holding the the new Kermit now, and it's it's a good looking watch, but it's not as good looking as the old watches. Like the aluminium bezel era, I think, mm-hmm. are just better looking watches. Technically, it's far far superior. The bracelet is amazing. The the bezel action is amazing. It it just it looks solid, um, but style wise, I, I think yeah, Rolexes of old were better. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, so I, I feel more of a draw to Tudor, mainly to the Pelagos from Tudor. I, I've yeah. kind of fallen in love really? with Pelagos, I think. Yeah, I, I love that watch. It's And it's quite a large watch for me. I, I don't usually like um, yeah. over 40 millimeter watches, but it, there's something about it that I just think, I think is awesome. Yeah, we, we um, got to check one out um, yeah, a month ago or so when we were at our AD here in Nashville. Kings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had yeah, one. That's right. We didn't get to pick it up or anything. Um, I don't think we did, did we? Did we? I can't remember now. I don't know. <laughs> That was a that was an interesting day. So. I do think the the Pelagos is like to me um, when I think of Tudor, I honestly think of that more than the Black Bays. To be honest with you, I, it's such a standout piece and it it's so classic. And I, I'm surprised that Tudor hasn't done more with it. And I, I'd say that they will. Yeah. I say that they really will. Yeah. In the next year or two, um, because I think they've developed really the Black Bay line. I think they'll hopefully, at least I hope, because I. I do like the Pelagos. I know people have been asking for a, a smaller version, but like you said, I think it wears well on the wrist too. Yeah, and it's it's a, uh, you know, it's one you don't see a lot. So I always, I'm always attracted to those. That's what I like. I like the stuff that like, e- even from a big brand, but the kind of unexpected piece, like that's mm-hmm. what I love about like my Speedmaster. Like it's not the Moonwatch that everybody else has. It's, it's different, yeah. but it's still like classic. And I think that there's something to that. But I mean, there's no judgment for people who have what what's new and what's big and like the big releases. I, I can't blame them. There are so many big releases that I'm attracted to, I think are, are absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Sure. So Adrian, so now you're going to be a, a, a Tudor fanboy. <laughs> no, Omega. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's a right. New one because he he's eyeballing. Can you be all right? Can you be a fanboy and have more than one watch brand in your collection? Well, I, I think you can feel some. I, I feel some sort of weird alliance. Uh, alliance. I, I can't think of the right word. What like is a it? loyalty. Loyalty. A that's what I'm brand? trying to say. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Loyalty. We got them. I got them in. Um. Yeah. So I, I feel a, a weird loyalty to Relics because. There are watches from them that uh, I like. It, it was my in to the watch world was through mm-hmm. Rolex. Um, and my my most favorite watch in my collection, I think my most favorite watch ever is a Rolex Explorer um, 1. And so I do feel like there's, there's a level of loyalty there. And I do like what they represent or represented. I do like the luxury that has become luxury through adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, similar to Land Rover, Range Rover, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a similar feeling there. Um, so I don't mind calling myself a, a, a Rolex fanboy, and I, I guess I'd be more loyal to Rolex than any other brand. But that doesn't mean that I have to just stick to mm-hmm. Rolex. Um, well, I think yeah. well, I think the problem is with Rolex because it's just like Houdinki. Whenever Houdinki do something that is slightly different or slightly off course, they get a bashing. Yeah, yeah. But then it's okay because Houdinki are at the top. Houdinki are the best at everything within watches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's the same with Rolex. Rolex is the biggest watch brand. They, they are they are more important within the watch world commercially than the Pateks, the APs, and all of that lot. Uh, and so it, it's easy for people to hate them. It's easy for people mm-hmm. to bash them. And they are so popular that yeah. everyone knows a submariner. Everyone wants a submariner, generally speaking. <laughs> and so it becomes boring. Yeah. And so I, w- when I go to a red bar and someone brings out a submariner, I think, oh, yeah, that's boring. Yeah. And then you go off, you want to see the old vintage Seikos mm-hmm. or the bashed up vintage Omegas. They're, they're yeah. the stuff that you want to see. But when it comes to what I personally want to wear, I, I like the No Date sub. It's a boring watch, but it's cool. Yeah, I think that's what where I've kind of gotten in my collection is like I I have so much appreciation for these other watches and we get in a ton and and I feel like it's justified when I can appreciate these but this is actually what I want to wear in it and like you said it's boring as all get out it's the most boring watch there is but I still like it and I, I which which sub do you want the no date yeah oh, yeah it doesn't no date's the way to go <laughs> yeah I just I one hundred percent I don't know and and. And I didn't, I used to be a Rolex, like I used to be a Rolex hater. I used to be a Submariner hater for sure. And things have changed. And I think there, there's something to be said. And uh, I was talking about this with our friend Josh that you look at, okay, maybe Adrian and people in the watch sphere, whether they work for media companies, blogs, YouTubers, we've gotten hands on with so many watch brands, right? Yeah. But look at those people's collections, like a lot of them have Rolex and they like Rolex. And that says a lot. Like you, you have people that have gotten hands on with X amount of brands and they still want a Rolex on the wrist. And again, to me, it's not saying that I'm not saying Rolex is the best. They're, they're definitely not, but that's just what I want to wear. Yeah. (laughs) So 
Rolex fangirl, here well, I come. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong. At the end of the day, all of this is a journey. Like you've, mm -hmm. you and I have been like deep into watches for about the same period of time, like three, mm -hmm. three years or so, like yeah. really deep into the hobby. You know, Adrian, I know you've been in the hobby for, for quite a bit longer, but like you're allowed to freaking change your opinion in your mind on things. Like who has the oh, same? Oh, I hate it when people oh, get upset. God. Like, oh, you, I'm pretty sure you said something different last time. Oh, look, he now likes yeah. that color. <laughs> Shit, guys. <laughs> like, you're allowed to change your opinion. I mean, and it's so frustrating because people really hold you to it. And yeah. it's okay to, like, I used to not, Kat and I have talked about this. I used to shit on court. At the beginning of this podcast, I shit on quartz watches all the time. Yeah. I own a quartz watch. That's one of my more favorite pieces. And you want one. I'm about to sell off a bunch of crap to go <laughs> buy a quartz watch. So, like... And now for a word from our sponsor and friends at Topper Jewelers. The jeweler known for their obsession over watches, details, and customer service is now partnering with the brand known for obsessing over creating quality and beautiful timepieces. Topper Jewelers is thrilled to announce that they are now an authorized Breitling retailer. Along with almost 20 other brands that Topper Jewelers carries, you will now be able to find the latest and greatest releases from the brand that has pushed innovation in design and heritage as of late. Topper Jewelers will carry both the classic Breitling models that we have loved over the years, as well as the newest offerings from the brand that has had a truly phenomenal year when it comes to new releases. Launching many exciting models such as the new Endurance Pro, the redesigned 2020 Chronomat on the super cool and retro bullet style bracelet, as well as the long awaited Super Ocean 57 reissue that's been a huge hit in the watch sphere. Head over to the Topper Jewelers website and check out their extensive selection of Breitling timepieces. That's T O P P E R jewelers.com. Oh, Side note, not on the podcast, you have held, you've been, um, you've had hands on with uh, Collector 101's new Grand Seiko, haven't you? I've seen it in one of your videos. Yeah, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it yeah, amazing? Is it, it as yeah. good as it looks? Is it amazing? It is amazing. It, it It's a very clever watch from a design point. Because uh, everything's I great. I need to get one on Don't the wrist me? so bad. Yeah, get, get hands on with it. It, it, I it need wasn't, one. I thought it might be for me. Um, it's a very cool watch, but it yeah. just wasn't for me. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's something very sexy about the dial. The dial is just it. the case shape hot. too. I love I that case the case shape. shape is cool. Yeah. yeah. See, that's what I'm unsure of is the case shape. No, I'm really unsure of it. And I know you had one, but I don't yeah. think I ever really tried it on yeah. like a dumbass. Well, so I only had it for like <laughs> for five minutes. It's fine. <laughs> But yeah, I really I need to see this. Yeah, it is. I, I like that that brush style. And yeah, yeah the K shape for me is what really gets it. And I know that watch since I, I had one is it's hefty for a quartz. It's like it feels like and almost a mechanical I watch. I yeah. love that. I, yeah. I forgot what I was talking about I before forgot. I went to the well, your Well, hate, your hate for quartz. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when we started this podcast, I, I shit on quartz watches. I hated quartz watches. Now I have one. I'm literally, like, contemplating selling probably four or five watches to get a quartz Opinions watch. Opinions change. And that's okay. Yeah. And it's just... Yeah, like I don't wear the same clothes five years from now. I don't, exactly. you know, I don't, Lord knows I don't drive the same car as I did five years from now or five years ago. So it, it's fine. It's mm -hmm. okay. And but like, also we're learning. We're, exactly. It's I, a I didn't like quartz watches because I thought it was a, a cheap way of creating something that, that was luxury. I now think that quartz is the ultimate luxury. You don't mm -hmm. have to set the thing. I can pick, up <laughs> you pick it up and you go. <laughs> yeah. What is more luxurious oh than just God. putting the thing on than having to worry about whether it's the right time or not? Yeah, so I, it's I, amazing. Yeah, I, for, certainly for me, it was it was a matter of actually learning what a high end quartz watch is, yeah. uh, as opposed to just assuming a high end quartz is the same as a five pound quartz. Mm -hmm. they, they aren't the same. No. Well, and it's exactly what you said. It's it's the journey. And I think this is what, you know, we've talked about and it it, it irritates me that people give you so much crap for, for buying and selling watches. Like you did all of this as a journey. The reality is, is we can't try on everything before we buy it. I'm more, I'm much more apprehensive. You probably would have just gone ahead and bought this Grand Seiko. You, you did go ahead and buy this Grand Seiko without trying it on first or whatever. For me, like I'm very apprehensive. I'm determined to find one mm -hmm. to try on before I source move. it and buy it. 
you know, but that's why you've gone through watches and mm-hmm. that's fine. And look at your freaking collection. Now you would not be at that collection if you mm-hmm. hadn't done that. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Like let I people I don't understand have the whole thing journey. around flippers. I, I don't understand why flipping a watch is you're not flipping it. You're not buying a watch and immediately selling it for profit yeah. multiple times. That's yeah. different. I've, done, I've done that a few, a few times and it, it doesn't, bother me like, yeah. like you say you these watches you can't get hands on with i got the opportunity to buy um the green tudor harrods tudor and people are like, oh you flipped straight away yeah you don't get to go in and think about this isn't the sort of watch that you go in and say oh yeah just, just can i come just back hold tomorrow? it hold and, it for a yeah, day yeah, or just, two yeah. hold it for the weekend i, I want to have a little think <laughs> I'll about be right it. back no no you've got to do it there and then and yeah. so and i knew i could sell this at least get my money back so mm-hmm. I was like, yeah sort it yeah buy the watch and Get it done. I love that video. I remember like it starts out and you're just like trying to hide it from your wife and you're just kind of whispering. <laughs> I can't <remember. laughs> You're like, I'm, I I'm in trouble. Walked through the, I literally walked through the door when I get home. And she's like, oh, um, I put a deposit down on a house. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> you should have probably she's texted like, me that a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I should... Okay, I just walked into the bedroom and I was just going to hide the watch for a bit. Like, oh, let's figure out what's going on now. Oh, man, that's terrible. Oh, that's hilarious. I get it, though. I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's I don't, yeah, I don't know. I have I have a lot of friends that flip far more than I do, but they'll have a watch. They'll have it for a month or two, and I've done the same. And then you move on and you get something else. And you in that way, to me, it's like, you can enjoy, I've enjoyed all these pieces that I've yeah. had. I've never hated, I hate the process of buying and selling because it's, it's stupid, yeah, but, um, but the, the getting the new watches in and always having that like honeymoon phase constantly, mm-hmm. it's an addiction. I mean, I, I, I know it is. Um, luckily I've slowed down quite a bit, but yeah, I, I don't really see anything wrong with it. No. Yeah. Let people have their journeys and. It's also great for content as well. It's, it's the most, um, true way of making content about a watch is yeah. actually buying it and owning it and does it actually live up to the hype or what you made of it in your head yeah i think it's no, it's fine people are too sensitive, <laughs> people are too sensitive. <laughs> so quit quit calling people out for being rolex fanboys and quit being too sensitive is basically the moral of this <laughs> yeah this whole well episode. i mean it's not even and we've talked a lot about rolex but it's it's the same it's for for seiko yeah i know a lot of people that collect seiko and then people are just like oh you're just a seiko fanboy seiko fangirl whatever and it's just it's always looked down upon and and yeah just it, it's if, looked down upon. i don't get it you, yeah these are good brands <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're literally saying oh you like being called a rolex fanboy they're mm-hmm. literally saying you're a fan of the best watch company. Now, yeah. I will say, I'll, I'll say, I do judge people who are Rolex or or whatever fanboys just because of a name. Like they they aren't watch people, but they're just the guy who buys it because you know it because yeah, it's a yeah, Rolex. Like they, they aren't part of our circle, though, are they? They're, they're, they're like the poser. They get, but I feel like they give the re, the like Rolex fanboys a bad name because mm-hmm. that's what you right. think of. You think of the guy who, you know, like I, I complimented somebody, you know, at one point I was like, oh, hey, great BLNR. And he just looked at me like I spoke like Chinese to him. <laughs> and I was like, if you don't, add, like, you don't have to know the reference. Number. I don't know the reference numbers to my watches. I, I mean, given a lot of them are really long, but still. <laughs> Like, you don't have to know the reference number, mm-hmm. but you should know, like, a little hint, you know, a yeah. little bit. Like, BLNR is pretty yeah. self-explanatory. I yeah. Think. So, yeah. It's true. They give everybody a bad name. They do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> well, and now, like, I, I feel self-conscious now because I know if this is the direction that I go and I have <clears throat> two or three Rolexes and then just a couple maybe of micro brands and stuff – kicking around I know now going into watch club meetups like I'm gonna be that girl that just like has a Rolex on the wrist I'm not gonna come into it with something really cool so like crazy or different even though I, I really or, yeah. love my watch like I'm not gonna be that person anymore that has that Grand Seiko at the meetup or has you know the really cool whatever and and I, I have to be okay with that but I, I I look down upon it upon myself like yeah I feel kind of bad but at the same time I know what I want to wear every day so I was driving my my parents around, um, my parents came up to visit in Scotland and I was driving around um, in my, I just bought a four by four and I was driving through all the puddles and the puddles were just, it, it like floods up here. So the puddles were just going crazy and just going all over the car. And my mum said, Adrian, you're not impressing anyone apart from, <laughs> an, <laughs> apart from yourself. And I thought, well, isn't that the best person to impress? Exactly. Is yourself. So, I am literally having so much fun right now driving through these puddles. 
It's like, I don't give a shit what everybody else thinks. <laughs> but that's, that's the same as our watches. You, you, I, I completely understand. And I, mm. I do know the feeling of rocking up to a watch meetup knowing that yeah. you have such a mediocre watch collection because mm-hmm. that's what I have. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this and exactly what you said earlier, this is what I want to wear on my wrist. This mm-hmm. is what I want to see when I look down. Um, and if it impresses you, then it, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about it. You, yeah. you could have the most rare Patek or you could have a no date sub. It doesn't matter as long as you like it. I think that's it. Uh, that's, this is probably where social media is a bad influence on us is when we, we think about or we value too much what other people think about our watches. I know it because I have such. I've got a Black Bay 58 Two Submariners and an Explorer. That is like such a basic bitch watch. <laughs> <laughs> Walking around I mean, with your star- Starbucks and Uggs boots. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and an Apple Watch. Yeah. Apple watch. The Apple Watch is probably the more exciting watch in the collection. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you've talked about the Pelagos. Is there anything else uh, you're thinking about adding to the collection? I know you, you mentioned a little bit of the, uh, the Omega. And, my my plan was to I am going to sell my no date sub um, because of the Black Bay fifty eight yeah and my plan was to buy an Explorer two white dial but they've gone up in price so much they're yeah. like yeah seven eight thousand pounds now and yeah. it's just, that's not worth it that they aren't worth that much money you're not mm-hmm. getting technology you're not getting craftsmanship worth that level of cash mm-hmm. and so that's why I wanted to check out the Omega the Seamaster of the white dial because that's a huge Comparatively, four thousand mm-hmm. pounds, four thousand five hundred pounds for that watch. Yeah, you're getting so much more watch <laughs> for the money than with the Explorer Two. Uh, but there's also um, a possibility of trying to push the budget a bit and get a CQ Panorama date oh, yeah. in bicolor, because apparently someone in our Facebook group said that they got twenty five percent off wow. retail when they Ooh. got it brand new, which is still a lot of money, um, but that's kind of become my grail watch. Um, yeah. Like relatively obtainable grail watch. So. Well, I'll be honest. Um, so yes, I, I've put my name down on a list for a sub, but I also, I was really going back and forth between that watch because I, after you did your videos, I was like, oh my gosh, I yeah. love this. And, and the only thing that that has me hesitating a little bit um, was the bracelet because I, I'm so in love with Rolex bracelets and I, and I love the way it feels. And I'm not sure. And and there's no one that carries that brand around here. So I can't get hands right. on with it. And that's that's a lot of money to spend. But the watches look phenomenal. Um, yeah. So are and you the going? Bezel. You're asking about the bezel action. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the bezel action on the Submariners is, is shit. Really? Okay. <laughs> For the money. I, I think I've, I've felt far better. The Black Bay 58 has better bezel action i do like the the black yeah Yeah. it it feels loose and it has this very weak ratchet click Mm. to it whereas the black bay 58 has these ceramic bearings holding it in place and then the the panorama the cq panorama date is just it's rock solid you can't get a better bezel action yeah i mean you're not going to buy a watch just because of the bezel action yeah I mean, is the you CQ kind of sometimes are though? Yeah, yeah. So, is the CQ is it a ceramic bezel or is it aluminum? I think it's ceramic. I want to say is it is. Ceramic. I would ceramic. It, so. it just looks yeah. a little bit different from f- some photos I've seen. It it almost looks aluminum, but I think it is. Yeah, that's. A, are that's a are you thinking watch. of the, the the one with the fancy date down at four o'clock yeah. or the date at three o'clock? The, yeah, the, the one four down o'clock. at four. Yeah, the four o'clock is a ceramic bezel. Oh, it is. Okay. Is that the one you'd go for? Is it it the other one? That's the one I'd go for. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like a 40, what is it? 42, 43? It's a big watch. Yeah, but it wears, yeah, it's it's massive, but it wears, it wore really nicely. Mm -hmm. And it also, I guess with like something like a Rolex or an Omega, it feels quite flashy if you have a massive watch. But Mm -hmm. although it's far more expensive than a Rolex of the same um, quality, it it doesn't feel flashy because it's glossy to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's just a lower brand. <laughs> well, I think I, I I think it's a little bit more of a you know, a low key brand and definitely mm-hmm. certainly no one's that doesn't know watches isn't gonna know what the heck it is. But yeah, yeah they're so good looking. I mean I and I like the I like the bi color too. All these tough choices. 
Definitely tough decisions. decisions. Well, Seed Master is good. I, I mean, I, I like it. Um, the one letdown for me was the bracelet, definitely. And I've talked yeah, about that. Yeah, the bracelet that. is such a letdown. They, yeah. I don't know what's happened. Like in the last few years, I feel like Omega has really done something with their bracelets. I don't know what it is. Like the integration into the case, it, it's very sharp now. And mm-hmm. they're very, they're much less uncomfortable much less comfortable than what they used to be. Like I am wearing my, I have a, an older Aquaterra and I love this bracelet. Those bracelets were way better. They're absolutely phenomenal. And the newer bracelets, they just, they, they hurt to wear. So that, in that bracelet you have on that Aquaterra reminds me a lot of the oyster bracelet on the Rolex mm-hmm. and it's, it's hefty. Um, the new ones are just, they're super light. And I feel like the, the weight of the case, it just doesn't match. Yeah. The sharp edges. It just doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's across like, a lot of bracelets yeah. from, from the brand, the Aquaterra's and the new Seamasters. But I will say, I love the new Seamaster on the rubber strap. It is good on the rubber strap, for Minus sure. the lack of deployant buckle. That's like a... Yeah. That's a letdown. <laughs> I love the Aquaterra. I, I, I did a video where I, I started looking at the Aquaterra again, and it, it's just such a cool watch. I love them. I so, think, yeah, it is a cool watch. It could be a next watch. <laughs> All the watches. Also, what? I've realized that I feel like I say, I, I've been calling it Aquaterra and I call my oars the Aquas. And I, I think it was after your recent video where you talked about like uh, watches under $3,000, I think. Yeah. Um, and you said Aqua. And I was like, well, fuck, there really is no you after the first A. And it really is Aquaterra. Aqua? And it's oh, Aquas. Oh, shit. I've been and saying I've it wrong been, too. I've been saying it wrong, and it's I, I have an Aquas and a freaking Aquaterra, and I say I think Aqua. we're thinking like Aquafina, like we just have oh, like Jesus. no, I mean like we're just like well, that's just a, a brand well, name just in here. General, yeah, like like well, but I do it with the with the Aquas. It's like I say Aquas, like I have I an Oris Aquas, and it's there's no you there. Dang it! And I've been saying it this whole time. And shout out to all of you guys for not like just putting us on blast. For that. <laughs> they probably say it wrong too. <laughs> Oh man, I was like, dang it. I, I realized that like I was at work watching your your video and I was like, wait a minute, there really is no you right there. <laughs> Whoops. Oops. <laughs> oh man. These are the things that run across my mind. Yeah. But yeah, the bracelets are yeah, the downside. I agree. Yeah, I can see Adrian like the so I yeah, I sold my Explorer too and the Omega Seamaster, the white it yeah, has yeah, a lot so of the same feel. It, it, that that actually, it hurt a little bit when I heard <laughs> you'd um, I can't remember what episode you announced it, but yeah. I nearly stopped the car and I thought, <laughs> like, what is we are not friends anymore. I know. Well and and, and it, it's kinda opposite to how you feel because you like those vintage Rolex and for me I like the new shiny Rolex and, and that's what, what I prefer, the ceramic and Well, and, especially when and we this is what we've come to with white dials like yeah. the white dials have to be like for our level of like OCD perfectionism yeah. the white dials can't be vintage yeah. because then you get like the the luminescence that starts to color and things like that like even yeah. that's something that I'm struggling with um with my planet ocean is I know like I notice more now like that green hint to the yeah. luminescence and it's driving me insane. well mine wasn't I mean and you'll see in the video that we do the next one when it comes out. It's um, coming out this week, Kat. Yeah, what are you talking yeah. about? We're done. It's done. <laughs> the, uh, the loom was was getting to me because it was yeah. starting to turn creamy. And it was not, you know, it just wasn't matching. And, and I just, I'm not a huge fan of patina. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just, it just wasn't doing it for me anymore. And it's just, it is a great watch. And I, I, I hope that Rolex eventually brings down the size of the Explorer. I would really love that. But Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Sad day. And I, what was like terrible but good is I sold that watch for more than I paid for it. And I only had it for probably a year and a half or so. That's the thing. I mean, be a Rolex fanboy. <laughs> buy stuff at like, <laughs> buy stuff at a dealer and then just sell that it That was later. not my goal going no, into it. No, but I mean, yeah, it does make it feel a little better. Yeah. Well, I guess as we, we start to kind of wrap up the show, Adrian, what, what's what's coming up for you in your channel? I should have this on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Not oh, I guess it's just kind of Rolex mania now that I've got <laughs> um, <laughs> after all that. <laughs> I've got every single um, new Submariner uh, and a couple of the old Submariner as well. So um, I'm going to be doing a big comparison of what is actually new on the new Submariners and then comparing all the green Submariners, comparing all the black Submariners. Um, I, I guess uh, uh, strategically trying to create content that is good for the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, these Submariners aren't 
going to be changed for no. ten years. It's so you've got content. you've got the Kermit, you've got you've got a Hulk too. We've got a Hulk. Yep, I've got the, uh, the uh, no date sub. I've got the old no date sub, and the new date sub. That's actually a great comparison. I don't think yeah. I've seen anyone do a collective like uh, they did the 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 maxi case and then the the new ones obviously, but not kind of going back. So I yeah, it's I'm interesting sure. how bad the previous generation of submariners look. So like the Hulk just looks shocking. Really, it, it looks yeah, it looks so unrefined. It looks mm-hmm. as if. Um, it's a prototype that shouldn't have been. <laughs> well, to be fair, that was a little bit more of a sports watch age Fad. of watches. And now you have sports watches that aren't really sports watches anymore. Mm-hmm. They're just regular watches. So yeah. I feel like you you get better finishing and, and things like that now than you would have five, ten years ago because people didn't care as much. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, they, they, they've certainly turned. They, I, I, I do appreciate what you think about um the perfection of the new relics it's like having something clean and modern Mm -hmm. and i think that's what draws me to the omega with the white dial yeah Mm -hmm. is i like the idea that this is everything's up to date this is a brand new watch and that white is going to be pristine that bezel is going to be pristine Mm -hmm. Uh, and you obviously get that with the submariners i think the only thing for me is and if i was comparing the two and a lot of people do um, cause I, I do, I'm a huge fan of Omega and it's one of my favorite brands, but I can see me getting, or I can see the Omega Seamaster fading out in style. Mm-hmm. Whereas the sub is just, it's not, it's always going to be in style. Well, I yeah. think that's almost yeah. where, where Rolex does so well is yeah, they, they bring, you know, they make changes to the sub, things like that, but they're so minor mm-hmm. that you don't like Unless you really know, you don't know. Like yeah. you, you really yeah. wouldn't know. Well, and, and Omega cha- like they change so often. Like I could see them; they're going to put a new Seamaster like next year and a new bracelet, and it's just like it's frustrating a little yeah. bit. And, and 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 Rolex doesn't really do that. And and Omega does have their timeless. They have the Speedmasters, and I think Aquaterras are great. They they just Aquateras. look Aquaterras. Aquaterra. <laughs> I'm never going to get this right <laughs> ever. And they they are timeless, but. Yeah, I just... Well, they're timeless, but they change too much. The Seamasters, they just change so often. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that, that that is what Rolex does really well. Yeah. Like, you can... I can look at... And now, given I, I don't know a lot about Submariners, I will be the first person to admit that. <laughs> but I could look at, like, probably the last three generations of Submariner and not be able to tell you <laughs> shit about e- any of them. <laughs> like, I have no idea which is which. But I like that. I like that timeless design. Like, I don't... And that's what I do like about, you know, more that... I feel like every brand has that one watch that's so classic that really never changes. So for Omega, I would say the the moon watch, realistically. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, if you look at a moon watch 15 years ago, it looks the exact same as a moon watch you get today. And very similarly to the Samaritan, the changes are so minute that it mm-hmm. looks so classic. So in 10 years, it's not going to be like a watch you bought because it was a fad. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's yeah, going to be absolutely. a classic watch no matter what. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that there's really something to that. And I think everybody needs that watch in your collection. Like it's fun to have, like I have a white planet ocean, but that's a little bit of a bold, like watch realistically mm-hmm. compared to something a little bit more classic. You know, I can see myself in 10 years. I'll still have my moon watch in 10 years. I won't have that planet yeah. ocean. The PO is pretty nice though. I think it, it does kind of stand the test of time a little bit. A little bit more so than the Seamaster. We'll see. All right. So lots of Rolex coming up on the, on the, the Bark Rolex and Jack stuff. channel. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other stuff. There will be other stuff. Just Rolex. <laughs> Rolex. Every, every, every Sunday. Every Sunday there's a new video. Yeah. You, you're trying to grow the channel. So Rolex, 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 Rolex. More Rolex. <laughs> We're getting Rolex. the title. Have- the title of this video, this this podcast is going to be just Rolex, Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. Uh, I, I, I want to start having kind of more um, discussions. At, oh, no. Like there's a whole new thing coming out. <laughs> I'm, I'm like start. <laughs> starting a podcast. Have I told you guys this yet? No. no. What's, so you're starting a podcast? Well, it's it's not quite a podcast like like this. It's it's going to be a short podcast, like okay? Twenty minutes, thirty minutes, uh, but it's going to be video. Um, oh. And I've recorded a first session with Jenny L. Oh, nice. Um, and that's hopefully going to come out next week, mid next week. So this is going to be um, different than your your drinking coffee and talking watches podcast, or is this will be this will this be on the same channel? Oh, it's going to be yeah. It'll be the same as that, but I, I now have an idea of what I'm actually doing. I have like, <laughs> <laughs> previously, uh, it was just a matter of just sitting down and talking with people. Yeah. But now I, I want to, um, what I am doing 
is um, catching up with watch people and getting them to choose a watch in their collection and getting them to talk about that watch and why it's special. So oh, why, really why that nice. watch means something yeah. within their collection as like opposed that. to just um, randomly talking. I also like, want to like talk business with people as well. Well, no, this, but, but this, this is great. This no, is long form podcast. No, I, I, um, I do. Th- I think that's great. I think anyone that starts a podcast, um, you have to find, you have to find what works for you and, mm-hmm. and a conversation that you feel like you can, if you're not excited about it, like no one's going to listen to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm glad that you kind of found a, a niche within a niche that you can kind of stick to because that's really awesome. And I want something that works on YouTube as well, because ultimately yeah. That's, yeah. that's my biggest audience and that's where my main output is. And, and that's what I want to grow. Um, but I appreciate that I listen to podcasts religiously. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a big podcast person. I get annoyed when there isn't a new podcast coming <laughs> out. So I, I kind of want to add to that, that yeah. mix of, of what's going on. Well, I'm curious, what um, what's uh, what's a podcast you listen to that's non-watch related? Uh, I listen to, uh, this, this might sound bad, I don't know, uh, Impulsive, which is Logan Paul's uh, podcast. Uh, and it's it, Logan Paul's a bit of a dick. <laughs> Sorry, I keep swearing. It, it, he's not a pleasant... He's made some bad life choices in mm, the past, yeah. but it's quite interesting how that's now manifested into him becoming actually a very mature person. And um, I get quite motivated by the stuff that he talks about and the people that he gets on to talk about, like just around business, social media, um, entrepreneurs. It's it's quite interesting, that side of things. And there's a lot around, ironically, if you know about Logan Paul's history, ironically, there's a lot around mental health and and how um just how to keep going when when things go wrong uh which is quite interesting i listen to gary v's podcast yeah i like uh, gary v every now and then he kind of does my head in sometimes <laughs> uh, there's a couple of podcasts i, I can't remember <laughs> yeah oh, that's cool i'm always interested because i i yeah i'm a podcaster and same i put it on when i'm taking photos and don't listen to him as much anymore i feel like um since i've been working from home as i used to just i don't have that commute but i i always look for something new to listen to on the the head, AirPods. I was going to say headphones, but I don't listen to headphones anymore. It's always on the AirPods. <laughs> AirPods are, we've talked about this, my favorite 2020 purchase. Yeah. Our AirPods. Me too. Yeah. I, I I'm, I'm kind of, of obsessed phone. with Yeah. I love these things. Yeah. We'll text and Kat's like, hey, do you have a minute to chat? And I'm like, hang on, let me get my AirPods in. I do not <laughs> yeah. hold yeah. my phone up to my ear anymore. It is the most first world problem. I refuse to do it's it. It's the best gadget. Like if you're looking really to is. gift your friends and family, they're not that Holiday expensive. Holiday gift guide early. Yeah. Just if they don't have one, go buy them Hop a pair. on a Black Friday sale, yeah. get, get a pair of AirPods. Mm-hmm. Change I've life. wanted to make a, a video about how much I love the AirPods. I just thought, no, people aren't going to get it. No. Like, obviously, you guys get it. Get, My entire it's life. Weird, isn't it? I refuse. Like, I do not answer the phone unless I have my AirPods. I yeah. hate talking on the phone like a regular person. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but. Yeah, Apple man. does it so well. And they're, I don't know, I'm kind of a tactile person too. And like the case feels really good in my hands and the yeah. AirPods feel kind of hefty. And yeah. I don't know, I really like it. Apple good they stuff. are great gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! All right. Well, this is fun. This hey, was a lot we of fun. Never, we never did a wrist check. Real oh quick. yeah, let's do one. What you <laughs> What you got, Adrian? I've just got my Explorer on my one four two seven zero. Yeah. Yeah, that sounded a bit pompous, didn't it? <laughs> I've just got an Explorer. As we're talking about <laughs> Rolex fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like my um it's my favorite watch. I love yeah. it. I, I I don't think I could ever get a watch that would beat this watch what is the story cool. behind that watch like did you get it for any particular reason out of curiosity it, yeah I, I bought it to to slag it off I, I was trying to figure out a way of growing my channel and what could i do that might go a little bit viral within the watch niche and i knew the explorer was a well-loved watch and was kind of whenever i read about the explorer on forums people were like, oh yeah such a great watch it, 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 everyone was always positive so i thought that's really boring no why can you like and explore so i thought let's buy one which i bought at auction at a decent price um i'll buy it do a couple of videos slag it off um upset the community and then hopefully the video will go viral and the channel will grow uh, but the moment i put it on i picked it up um and the moment i put it on i thought oh, this is quite cool actually. <laughs> <laughs> as I was, I was supposed to buy it do a couple of videos and flip it uh and that was like three years ago now yeah um, so yeah, that's a story. Now it's a your favorite, favorite authentic watch. Authentic story. Yeah. Kat, what's on your wrist? I've got the uh, the Oris, the Oris uh, pointer date, big nice. crown pointer date. I don't think this is a Bark and Jack strap. Let me look real quick. <laughs> get, oh, get an extra little. Oh, no. Oh. This is like, I think this is a worn and wound strap. Can I say that that Scottish 
gray strap is literally the fi- my favorite strap in my entire collection. Yeah. Like from you. We're going to have some new things coming out. I'll be honest. I'm not, I'm just not a strap person. I like bracelets and um, I'm not just saying this because you're on our show, but <laughs> uh, your NATOs to me are just, they're the best. They're, they're thin and that's a big issue I have. Like I like aesthetically the look of a NATO, but I hate the way they usually feel. They're just bulky. They add this bulkiness to yeah. your watch and and your your natos that you sent were just they're phenomenal if i, I yeah if you see me wearing it on a nato it's usually it's usually the bark and jack thank you very much yeah. we use 1.2 millimeter nato where normal people use 1.4 millimeter thick oh. na- uh, nylon well i was really Honestly. skeptical because i'm not a fan of like i don't understand the single pass nato thing i i've taught i didn't get it either crap about it like it. when <laughs> when james stacy put out that episode and everybody was you I, know, which i've been doing for years the bottoms <laughs> of their natos i was like come on y'all this is stupid but then like you sent those and i'm like you get it. Well, dang, it's so thin. And yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. What about what are you wearing? I have the Aquaterra. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. Right. So I have my, my Aquaterra. Your with Apple the, Watch. Oh, my Aquaterra. Aquaterra. Not Aqua. Uh, and my Apple Watch, my two. Yeah. Both, both rose gold. Different, both rose different gold. <laughs> rose golds, but yeah. Very different. I like it. All right. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for yeah. coming on the podcast today. This was so Thanks fun. Thanks for having me. Catching up. Eventually, maybe we'll be able to do this in person <laughs> and reschedule our trip one day. Absolutely. In like <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> it's always fun catching up with you guys. Yeah. I like, I like to think so. Yeah. But so where... <laughs> I mean, I enjoy coming over and catching yeah. up with Kat. So yeah. I assume everybody else likes to, too. Um, so, Adrian, where can everybody find you? Uh, uh, just Bark and Jack on everything. Instagram at Bark and Jack. YouTube uh, forward slash Bark and Jack and Bark and Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Perfect. And everybody head over to our website, www.tennn2.com. We'll have show notes, links to all the stuff that we talked about, links to all of Adrian's stuff because it's absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and be sure to follow us along on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Tennant2Media. Yeah. And that is it. That's it, everybody. Bye, Bye. y'all. Bye.